Hi guys, so today it is the 14th of December and here is the picture for today. Even before the child's forefinger had time to unfold. The next day Joachim woke up before Mama and Papa. He sat up in bed. Only 10 days left till Christmas Eve. What was going to happen to Elizabeth, the angel of Furiel and all the others who were going to Bethlehem? Before he managed to open the advent calendar, Mama and Papa were in his room. Let's get going, said Papa. Under his arm he had two large atlases. Joachim opened the door with the number 14 on it. The folded piece of paper fell down into the bed and they, and they saw a picture of a raft with people, animals and angels on it. They sat on the edge of the bed. That day it was Joachim's turn to read. Isaac. Towards the end of the 9th century, a strange raft was sailing on the River Po in the direction of the Adriatic Sea to the east. The country they were sailing through was called Lombardy. On the raft stood a small flock of sheep, bleating crossly because they were not allowed to drink the river water. The smallest sheep was scuttling to and fro, so that a little bell hanging round its woolly neck was tinkling. Two wise men were pointing at objects around them and saying wise words about the beautiful country they were sailing through. After a long discussion about the blessings of oranges and dates, they agreed that God could not have created a better world, at least not in six days. But the back of the raft stood a man in Roman clothes, steering with a long oar. Such clothes had not been long out of fashion. He was talking to a small girl who was holding a piece of cardboard in her hands. On one side was written, To Bethlehem. On the other was a picture of a young woman with long fair hair. Most conspicuous were two angels standing forwards on the raft, beating their wings to stop the boat drifting towards the river bank. This was long before river boats were equipped with propellers. Now and again, the cherub imperial turned to the others and praised the beauty of the landscape they were sailing through. Wonderful, he called out. Nothing but glory and joy. It's just like on the fifth day when God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Once or twice somebody on the shore noticed them, but the raft was revealed for only a brief second. That's because it wasn't just sailing down the valley of the Po, it was sailing down through history too, crossing the tidal wave of the age. When a little child stood on the bank of the river and pointed at the strange raft, it disappeared even before the child's forefinger had time to unfold. So perhaps it was only a reflection. They passed old Roman bridges and buildings, theatres, temples and aqueducts. The angel of Furiel pointed out all the churches. I was often in this area as a young man, Corinius told them. He stared down at the long oar in the water. But that was a very long time ago. Or the opposite, of course. I mean, it's still a good while before we get there. Dixie! Elizabeth realised he was talking about the Roman period, when there were Roman soldiers nearly everywhere in the world. What did it look like here then? she asked. The Roman theatres are still standing, the orange trees as well, and the red poppies along the river bank. But nobody had heard about Jesus. What's new are all the churches and monasteries, priests and monks. Dixie, Dixie. Before long, Joshua pointed at the river bank. We'll land over there. Quirinius tried to steer the raft towards land and was helped by the two angels who beat their wings energetically. While Joshua the shepherd drew the raft up to a tree with his crook, the angel of Furiel said a few warning words to the cherub imp. If we meet any people, you must be sure to remember to say, Fear not, in a gentle angel voice, so that they will not be afraid. We're only visiting, so it's important that we behave properly. All the pilgrims alighted from the raft, those on two legs, those on four, and those with wings on their shoulders. They passed a country church and turned uphill through the countryside. The towns were not very large at this period, but soon they were approaching one of the largest. Ephiriel told them it was called Padua. Just before they sped through the town gate, they caught sight of a man in a blue tunic. He was sitting on a stone with his head in his hands. It looked as if he had been sitting there for a very long time. Imperial flew towards him, hovered in the air right in front of him, fluttering his wings, and said, Fear not, and be in no wise afraid. I am Imperial, and am one of God's angels who is out on a sacred errand. It looked as if the cherub's word had an effect, for the man did not throw himself to the ground and did not hide his head. He said neither Alleluia nor Gloria Dei. He simply got to his feet and walked towards them. Then he is one of us, said Ephiriel. 
the man offered his hand to Elizabeth. I am Isaac the shepherd, and I am going the same way as you. That made it easier to guide the six sheep through Padua. Altogether there were fifteen of them, going at such a speed that the few people who were out in the streets didn't have time to look at them before they vanished. The pilgrims only just managed to see the inhabitants of the town too. When they glimpsed an early riser, the man or woman disappeared in the next instant, perhaps to be replaced by a different man or woman. Elizabeth thought they were in the town for only half a minute, but in fact the strange pilgrimage haunted the streets of Padua for seven or eight long years, for that half minute consisted of thirty brief seconds, and those thirty brief seconds were divided between all those seven or eight years. Ancient accounts tell us that there was never so much talk of angels in Padua as during those magic years from 804 to 811. Now and then someone or other thought they had seen something strange in the, sh in the streets. Could it have been a procession of angels who had swept through the town? Outside the town walls they stopped in front of a small monastery. Strange to see a Roman town again, said Quirinius. I wonder who's the emperor now? Ephiriel looked at his angel watch. It's exactly 800 years after Christ. On Christmas year this day, Charles the Great will be crowned Emperor of Rome. Then we'll soon be starting on a new century, said Joshua. He struck his shepherd's crook against the monastery wall. To Bethlehem! To Bethlehem! Papa opened the atlas, pointed out the river Po, and found the town of Padua. Then he turned the pages backwards or forwards and tried to trace with his finger the long distance the pilgrims had run. Here's Halden, he began, then they came down to the big lake in Sweden. That must be Vanern. From there they hurried south through Sweden to Kungelf, Gothenburg, Halmstad and Lund. They rode across to Schurerlen and visited Copenhagen. Yes, I can find it all. They arrived in Fern and sprang through Odents. They were ferried across a strip of water called Little Belt to Jutland. There they passed the towns of Kolding and Flensburg. They travelled backwards in history as well, said Mama, but Papa merely went on following the path they had run, with his finger on the map. Here's Hamburg. Then Elizabeth was left lying in the market in Hanover. Yes, here. And here's Hamlin, the town that had broken its solemn promise to the rat catcher. You broke a solemn promise too, interrupted Joachim. You opened my secret box. Papa continued. Further south is Paderborn. This is where the cherub imperial flew down in spirals from the church tower. From there they ran to Cologne and continued up the valley of the Rhine. And the angel imperial was quite right. It's wonderfully beautiful there. That was during the 13th century, said Mama. Wait a bit, said Papa. I want to follow the whole route. In Mainz they met Balthazar, then it was Worms and Baal. Today Baal is in Switzerland. But Elizabeth was there in the 12th century, said Mama. Papa went on searching with his finger. Here's Lake Beer and Lake Geneva. I found a little place called Martigny. This is a good map. Through the St. Bernard Pass, yes. Today there are tunnels all over the place. Down through Valley d'Oste to Lombardy and the Valley of the Po. Bravo, said Mama. But they're travelling down through history as well. I think that journey is an even stranger one to think about. But that's only something he's invented, said Papa, looking up from his map. I think it's quite true, said Joachim. Yes, who knows, said Mama. Papa only shook his head. Now I wonder which route they're going to take. Goodness, it's eight o'clock, exclaimed Mama. There was a bit of squabbling because they were so short of time. Joachim thought there was nothing worse. As he ran to school, many strange names were buzzing in his head. Now he had seen all those places on the map. At school, they had started to rehearse a nativity play. Joachim's class would be putting it on in the gym on the last school day before Christmas. Joachim was going to be the second shepherd. And that is the end of uh, chapter 14. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.